SpongeBob Conspiracy Theory 7, The Robot Invasion Theory. Goofy Goober Alien Death Cult Theory. That kind of made sense. Mother Theory. Let's that made plenty of sense. I like the Pearl Theory. On this one. The Pearl Theory made plenty of sense. There is a secret robot invasion happening in Bikini Bottom. Everywhere you look, robots have integrated themselves into Pro society, Karen? kidnapping Karen? and replacing people with robot cyborgs, waiting for their chance to rise up and start the robot apocalypse. This is not a joke. I repeat, the robots are coming. The robots are coming. This is the robot invasion theory. Metal, metal SpongeBob. He want to be Sonic so bad. <gasps> oh, ugh, almost died right there. Oh, excuse me. Alex, what are you doing at a playground? Oh, okay. What the hell is that? Alex, please stop this. Alex, my ears. Alex, you look real creepy Alex. now, Alex. Alex, Alex, you look real creepy. Oh. Sorry, what? You okay, dude? Uh, yeah, sorry, um, I've just got a lot on my mind lately. How's the, uh, SpongeBob theorizing going? It's good. It's good. Um, I'm actually thinking about. If I saw three grown, grown adults Why? at a uh, kids park. Yeah, I mean, people. I assume they're crackheads. I didn't go to film school for three years just to make SpongeBob theories forever. Yeah, but I mean, just, it's just something you're doing now. It doesn't mean you have to do them like forever. Exactly. It's easy for you to say. I mean, what? You're a year out of film school and you're already directing commercials. Yeah, but I didn't go to film school to make commercials either. It's just something. Exactly. You're doing now. Like SpongeBob theories. Yeah. Everyone I mean, has their own path, Alex. I don't know. These uh, these videos also just they, they take a lot to make. Not sure if I'm up for it anymore. Start doing anime, bro. You're up for it. You're just like watching cartoons all day. That sounds awesome. I would kill to have as many followers as you, man. No, you wouldn't, bro. I can't imagine taking the joy of cartoons and anime away to like dissect them and make videos out of them. That sounds so stressful. Cause now you can't you can't sit down and watch and enjoy a cartoon ever again because you're always thinking of okay, how can I break this down to a video? SpongeBob conspiracy. Wow, I just realized I've uh, I've been making SpongeBob videos for over, over a, a year. year now. Uh, definitely did not Damn. think that I'd still be making these a, a year later. But it's all worth it, right? Because you guys love them and I love making them and they're they're super easy to make. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> the sponsor. Time to talk about today's sponsor. Do you like intense, action-packed mobile games? This nigga probably only makes a video, like posts a video when he has a sponsor for it, cause he needs the money that badly, cause of how much, how uh, long these videos take. I respect the hustle. If I had sponsors, bro, if I was more child-friendly and I had a sponsors, I would be blowing y'all ass. I'm coming. Ah! SpongeBob watches a scary robot movie. Then oh, I remember super this. Paranoid about robots taking over and even kidnaps Mr. Krabs. Yeah, what? I remember this. You think I'm, I'm a robot? robot? What? We don't think. We know. <laughs> it's a really funny episode, but I can't help but Fire wonder if SpongeBob's fears might be a bit more justified than we thought. In the episode SB129, we get our first glimpse of the future. Of oh yeah, I remember this video. Years later. I mean, oh, okay, uh, episode. What's going on here? Why is everything? Chrome. Everything is chrome in the future. We see a world covered in chrome. This was Loki scary. Is with robotic people. I think this Loki scared me when I was a kid. SpongeBob? No. I am SpongeTron. <laughs> and this isn't the only time we see a future full of robots. In the season seven episode, Back to the Past, SpongeBob time travels to an alternate future where Man Ray takes over, and once again, people have been replaced by robots. Yeah. And then, in the second SpongeBob movie, Sponge Out of Water, there's a deleted scene where SpongeBob and Plankton go to the future and see this. We did it! I wonder when we are. Excuse me, sir. Do you know what year this is? What the hell is this? <laughs> SpongeBob the monkey? Mo that's that monkey? The monster. We didn't go back in time. We went front in time. What? And there's even foreshadowing in episodes that take place in the present. In the Krusty Krab training video, we hear this. Well, luckily for you, Mr. Krab's fear of robot overlords keeps the balance of technology in check. And in its hey. security guards, we can see an exhibit that clearly shows the evolution of SpongeBob eventually getting taken over by robots. Okay, so there seems to be a lot of evidence. So it doesn't matter. Anytime they go to the future, there's always robots involved. But I think that just might that might be life in general. Like there's just gonna be a bunch of robots eventually. But honestly, 
why does any of this matter? Is it a I mean, scene? Oh, I didn't the hear it, my bad. is a pretty common depiction of the future in lots of different media. Exactly. And even if this is the canonical future of the show, it's at the very least thousands of years in the future. It's not like we can already see this robot invasion happening in present-day Bikini Bottom. Period. Right? Exactly, Here's yeah. an interesting question about SpongeBob that's always bothered me. Why are there so many robots in the show? And I'm not talking about Sandy or Plankton's inventions. It makes sense for them to have robots since they're both genius inventors. But why do hospitals and office buildings and- It's so crazy that Plankton's a genius and he still gets bitched on just because Mr. Krabs has more money. <laughs> like, like, that man is actually a genius, but it's like you forget he's one because of Mr. Krabs. Amusement parks and Weedy Hut Juniors and many, many more places have such advanced robots. I mean, let's ignore the fact that they're underwater and robots wouldn't really make sense down here, but yeah. Kiwi Bottom isn't like a super advanced society, right? You wouldn't really say that they have much futuristic technology, except when it comes to robots. But yeah. why? And what's even stranger is that there are many, many instances where these robots suddenly turn evil. That that robot looks straight out of Five Nights at Freddy's. This is something suddenly you would definitely see in uh, FNAF. Evil. The first time I really started to notice this was in the season seven episode, Tunnel of Glove. Spongebob and Pearl get trapped in a Glove World boat ride that's full this. of animatronics. Yep. Patrick tries yep, to set them free that. by breaking into the control room, but accidentally causes all the animatronics to suddenly turn evil and attack Spongebob. Because Patrick is always doing some ish. This is a pretty basic cartoon trope. Someone accidentally breaks the controls, then the robot malfunctions and yeah. turns evil. This isn't really all that weird for SpongeBob. Except what's strange about this is that Patrick doesn't break any controls. He hits a button labeled animatronic override, and that's what causes the robots to turn evil. Why is that even a button? Lean on this wall. Huh? But why is that even a button though? Like, like, why would they have it set up for the androids to become humanoid? Maybe. Yeah, I got nothing. They aren't malfunctioning. The robots were intentionally designed to have a button that makes them attack people. But yeah. why? Then, in the episode Good Neighbors, Scooper discovers a flyer for a home security system that's suspiciously free despite it clearly being very advanced. After he sets it up, his house suddenly grows arms and legs and starts destroying Bikini Bottom. What the hell? I don't remember this one. I definitely do not yeah, remember this one. House is destroying the neighborhood. Now, to be fair, this was a malfunction caused by SpongeBob, but why would a simple home security system have giant arms and legs? I mean, the malfunction didn't create them, they were clearly already installed. Yep. They eventually do manage to stop the house, but what's really creepy about this is that we can still see signs of Squidward's house being sentient after this episode. <laughs> then, in the season 11 episode, Krusty Cleaners, SpongeBob and Patrick go to an office building and encounter a trash cleaning robot. The robot immediately attacks them for causing a mess. <laughs> No! My rump is roasting! But this time, there's no malfunction that causes this. It's working exactly as intended. So Not why is it targeting does them? does the robot have a buzzsaw and a literal laser cannon, <laughs> but it also turns all of the nearby machines into killer robots to help oh, hunt down- Oh, he is spitting. Why the fuck does a trash can need a- Cannon and a saw. Okay, Daddy Alex, you're really on his own. SpongeBob and Patrick. So where are all these places getting these super advanced robots? And more importantly, why are they all being programmed to suddenly turn evil? This is a question that stumped me for a while until I watched the season 11 episode, My, My leg. leg. This My leg! is the episode where I truly realized there was an actual conspiracy theory here and not just cartoon antics. It's time we finally find out okay. who's behind the robot invasion. But before that, I need to turn off this fan because I'm actually getting kind of cold. Put up and down up. Into the thick of it. What? What's in your house? You? I swear, if you look at a black man, we're gonna have a problem, Alex. A tentacle monster. Okay. All right. So this is fighting anime villains in his house. This man's hey, in a. This man's um, in a hentai. I'm still serious about you leaving this house. It's not that I don't appreciate everything you've done for me. It's just I think we want very different things. You know, I don't. I don't want it to come to this, but I will. I will use force if I have to. So you. You better go. Hey Alex! Hey! Hey Alex! 
That was me knocking on his door. I accidentally interrupted his uh, The episode, filming. My Leg, focuses on the reoccurring gag of this one fish always injuring his leg throughout the show. Yeah. My leg! My leg! My leg! At one point in the episode, he goes to a hospital and meets a robot that works there. It's just a small throwaway. He doesn't gag. have the his robot leg, though. never turns evil or does anything strange. But he doesn't have a leg. Don't take my leg! Don't take my leg! They're replacing them. There's him. something awfully familiar about the robot's design. They're trying Let's to replace them. Let's go all the way back to the season three episode, Plankton's Army, which opens with Plankton trying to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula with a robot disguise. You never know what trick he'll use to steal me secret Krabby Patty formula. What a quaint restaurant. I think I will sample their wares. These robots have an uncanny similarity, right down to the same tie. Uh, okay, but maybe we could just chalk this up to the showrunners being lazy and reusing assets. But yeah, because the colors Bob are different. Always had a pretty diverse amount of robot designs throughout the show. But the colors are different, like though. It's not like this is a direct copy paste either. They went to the effort to redesign the face and colors, but it was still clearly based on Plankton's uh, robots. So. That's Here's a stretch. My Plankton has built many robots to try and steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. Yeah. But I think after he fails to do so, he doesn't just throw them away. He redesigns the robots and then gives them to different businesses in Bikini Bottom. With so the you're trying to tell to me all the robots take over the world are Plankton? He has enough in place. I mean, we know what Plankton really wants isn't eh. the secret formula, it's to rule the world. I will rule the world! And there's even the video eh. game Battle for Bikini Bottom, where Plankton tried to take over using an army of robots. I played so this game. This theory doesn't seem too far fetched for Plankton's character, eh. but we're gonna need a lot more evidence if we're gonna prove yeah. he's the one behind all the robots in Bikini Bottom. So you're telling me no matter the future Plankton takes over, that's actually fire because he is a genius. So as a genius, he should get what he deserves. Okay, I like, I'm not mad at that ending. In the season three, episode no weenies allowed we see a robot working at a place called weenie hut juniors would you care for another diet cola with a lemon twist weenie and while it doesn't resemble any twist. of the robots we see plankton make does that voice sound familiar to you would you care not for another really. diet cola with a lemon twist what a quaint restaurant I think I will sample that I way. yes! And again, it's not like this is the default robot voice we hear in SpongeBob. There are many different voices the show has used for robot characters. What a quaint restaurant. Greetings, I am Robo 2.1. No threat detected. This is very uncomfortable. Oh, leave my um, father alone! But here, they specifically- I think this is a stretch. This is robots. a stretch. Let's go back to Glove World for a second. In the control room, we see a machine on the wall that looks shockingly like SpongeBob. Yeah, so okay. much so that Patrick yeah. even mistakes him for it. We know Plankton has built a Spongebob robot before and oh, okay. went to the chum bucket. Maybe oh. he repurposed it here inside of Glove World. Mm, okay, Peters, I can get behind that. robot also has a striking resemblance to Plankton's robot in the season 9 episode Eek and Urchin. In the season 5 episode, the Patty Gadget, get behind this one. tries to get Spongebob fired by replacing him with a machine that creates Krabby Patties for free. But it's never explained where Squidward got this machine. Now, it doesn't resemble anything we've seen Plankton make, but a staple in a lot of Plankton's inventions is having them resemble his likeness, especially with one eye in the middle, and that's exactly what we see with the Patty Gadget. That's not an eye, though, but I mean, sense for I mean, maybe, but that's clearly not an eye, so so it is kind of stretching it. In the episode All That Glitters, SpongeBob buys a super advanced talking spatula. <laughs> Spatula 3000 at your service. Why he naked? Spatula, we find out Plankton has a whole collection of advanced spatulas just like this one, and even tries to trick SpongeBob into taking a talking spatula. It seems like no matter where we turn, we can find a connection between the technology in Bikini Bottom and Plankton. But if you remember, eh, not all of them, not all of them. Some of them were stretches. They've actually replaced all the existing citizens with robot copies. I am SpongeTron. And believe it or not, this is also something we can already see happening in Bikini Bottom today. Get ready to see how far this robot invasion has really gone. Oh, I'm ready. I'm shaking in my timbers. Hey, hey, Victoria, what are you, uh, what are you, what are you doing here? Um, I was just around, thought I'd stop by. Can I come in? Or? Uh, inside? Inside? Uh, no, no, no. It's just, it's not a good time right now. Um, so awfully you suspicious. Kind of like you're going through something. Yes, yeah, awfully suspicious. I just wanted to check in on you. Uh, I appreciate that. It's just, I'm fine. You know, uh, it's just the, the SpongeBob stuff is like, keeping me really busy. I'm a little stressed about that. Yep. And, um, but I'm, I'm fine. You should, you should probably go. You're being really weird. Yeah, not yeah you're scaring me. Phone, you're living in total darkness. Can you just talk to me? What's going on? Okay, fine. Okay, we can talk just. Just not here. Fine. Do you want to get coffee or something? Sure. Fine. Yeah. Um. Uh. I gotta put something away. Just stay right here. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Nigga allergic to women. He just like me for real. Now, we know Plankton has tried to turn people into robots before. Yeah. SpongeBob, come in here! <laughs> or should I say Robot Bob? But he gave up after SpongeBob was too annoying. <laughs> You've got to take that yellow nightmare back! It's yeah. not worth it! But I don't think this was his only attempt. In the season 11 episode, The Checkup, SpongeBob and Squidward are trying to give Mr. Krabs a health checkup by testing his pinching reflexes. Okay, I brought what? plenty of things for Mr. Krabs to pinch. I'm, uh, I don't... <laughs> and one of the things I definitely did not see this episode. I don't know about this. Is a baby. A baby's cheek. <laughs> oh my. Oh, okay. It's a robot. Okay. Maybe it's just a toy. That was insane, but maybe it's just a toy. God. Okay. Lucky that was a robot baby. Hmm. Some random baby just turned out to be a robot, and it's never explained why. It's a That's toy. It's weird even for SpongeBob. But things get even more interesting when we go back to season nine in the episode Plankton's Pet, where Plankton tries to steal a Krabby Patty using the exact same purple baby as a robot disguise. That diabolical fiend! I can't believe this is working! And we're not even done yet. If we go even further back how to did, season five episode, how did Mr. Google Krabs Bass, even know that was see true? The exact moment where Plankton gets the idea to turn the baby into a robot. Why you're so tiny and helpless? I could take your formula whenever I wanted to, and you couldn't do a thing about it. Take your formula. That's it. Finally, victory will take be Take your mine. formula. Now, in the episode, it's implied that this is just him getting the idea to turn everyone into babies to steal the formula. But isn't it crazy how it also perfectly lines up with the purple baby? Okay. Suddenly okay. Turning into a okay. Robot you cook it. Okay. Episodes? Okay, Alex. Okay, Alex. I'm. <laughs> Okay, Alex, I'm smelling it. I'm sniffing real hard. Alex, you're cooking it up. There's another fish who's always been very suspicious to me. The strangely realistic news anchor fish. All of Bikini Bottom is a buzz over the identity of a mysterious flying man who helps people. Who knows what superhero act of courage he'll astound us with next. Astound us with next. Of cartoon characters, why is he the only realistic one? In fact, I made a whole theory about how there are evolved cartoony fish that can talk and yeah. primitive realistic fish yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, you did say that. Pointed out, the one exception to this is the realistic news anchor fish. Well, if you ask me, he looks a lot like one of those animatronic singing fishy by. I was literally about to say, they said in one of his previous theories, he said that there was people recording them and come down recording. What if that's just one of the people like controlling the news station? You feel me? Because they like they're control, they're pretty much they're observing everything they got going on in bikini, bikini, bikini bottom. Well, that's just one of the people like controlling the news and a gift shop, especially the way he mechanically moves his mouth and how we only ever see one side of him so already a pretty strong indication that he might be a robot but there's yeah. also something familiar about his voice what kind of cruel careless evil person okay. plankton it does sound like plankton i never caught that no that's nasty how did i never think of that it sounds exactly like plankton plankton controls the news Dives in town. That's right. He has the same voice as Plankton. And if you're going to take over the world, then you're definitely going to want to control the media. But how exactly is Plankton replacing these people with robots? Well, what? I think the season 10 episode, Whirly Brains, gives us an important clue. In this episode, suddenly a new toy becomes extremely popular in Bikini Bottom, the Whirly Brain. Just flip your lid, attach the propeller, and watch your brain soar under the beat into the air. Yeah, it's, it's a weird episode. So people are actually voluntarily attaching devices to their brains and ripping them out of their That's bodies. That's so no disgusting. No one thinks this is suspicious. If you That's ask very me, disgusting. this seems like the perfect way to replace someone with a robot. Remember, yeah. in Welcome to the Chum Bucket, Plankton told us how he turns people into robots. I'll be forced to remove your brain and implant it in my robot chef. <laughs> removing their brains. But is there any proof that he's the one behind the Whirly Brain toys? Let's take a look at the new Probably. Spotlight prequel the patrick star show every once oh, in a while Lord. the show cuts to this stop motion parody of frankenstein with plankton what and he actually fuck? uses whirly brains to conduct his experiments what the hell it's is not this? super clear how this all connects to the main show i mean we do see patrick interact with the stop motion plankton at some point so they're at least in the same universe but regardless it's still a what solid connection we see another head-based gadget in the season 11 episode bottle burglars an invisible helmet being advertised in a magazine for only 99 cents how hard is this have to watch these shows 
toes to catch these. How hard? Like, I feel like he's watching this shit too hard. Like, this man has a, he has like a, a magnifying glass. And in the same episode, we see Plankton using the exact same helmet. Crabs will never see me coming in visuals. Now, maybe this is just implying that he bought the helmet from the magazine, but that okay. doesn't really line up with what we know about Plankton as an inventor. Plus, I can't see them selling a tiny version of the helmet just for Plankton. Seems a lot more likely that Plankton created the helmet and is selling them to the people of Bikini Bottom, possibly as a way to create more robots. 99 right, cents so too! To Everyone got 99 cents! idea of how Plankton plans on turning the citizens of Bikini Bottom into robots, but there is one more character that I believe has already been secretly assimilated into a robot, and oh. it's not some Wait wait wait, 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 wait. If we could guess the character, not Patrick, because they talk his brain out. Sandy? It's not a random character, he said. Sandy? It could be Larry the Lobster. It's not Mr. Krabs, because he would have the secret formula now if it was Mr. Krabs. Squidward is possible. He took someone's brain out and put it in Karen. But whose brain did he take out? Background character either. It's one of the main characters in SpongeBob SquarePants. This final part of the robot invasion theory is going to completely change the maybe school the entire show are you ready because this is the patrick star theory we just saw him remove his brain what do you mean that don't make sense like obviously patrick was like the obvious answer but we saw him remove his brain so that doesn't make any sense at all they don't make okay <sighs> he's waiting on you gay gary the snail? Meow. Shit. What the hell? Victoria? 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 What the hell just happened? What in the horror movie is this? Whatever this theory is, I'm not now, agreeing with I it. Fully I think it's wrong Patrick by default. A robot is a very bold claim. Yeah, but hold your judgment. Yep, I think end. it's wrong by, by default. Far, I'm judging. The most judging. requested theory I get on this channel is to cover Patrick Star and more specifically his inconsistent intelligence. Throughout the entire show, there are these little moments where Patrick suddenly says something smart. I'm a bit more complicated than that. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. And then immediately <laughs> goes back to being dumb. <laughs> There's so many examples of this happening that many people have actually made their own theories oh about God. it. Is Patrick secretly a genius and just pretending to be dumb? Does it's he have a enigma. secret split personality? I diagnosed Patrick Starr with trauma-induced anxiety triggered spontaneously duplicative multi-intellectual DID with additional paranoid schizophrenic delusion. Hang that Nah. ...of a mental multiverse. Uh, uh, maybe, but I've come to a bit of a different conclusion. Have you ever noticed how every time we see Patrick try to think, there's either sparks or smoke coming out of his head? And this doesn't happen for any other character? This doesn't happen to any other character, just Patrick. If it was only Patrick, but I feel like this happens more than just him. Again. And almost every time we see inside of Patrick's head, it's represented with gears or some kind of machinery. Okay, bro. Okay, bro. He said, let him cook. I'll let him cook. I'll let him cook. I'll let him cook. Now, we're supposed to assume that this is just a cartoony way to visualize thought, but it what's is. strange is just how consistent they are with it. And even stranger, none of the other characters' thoughts are visualized this way. Just got an order from the boss. Dump everything that isn't about fine dining. Squidward's happy gland is forced to take shelter in the recesses of his mind. It's okay. only Patrick who seems to have this robotic association with him. And just look at how detailed they are with it. While Patrick's head is- We literally just saw his brain. ...rule of dumb, if you look closely, you can see a spring pop out of him and even a hole left behind by the spring that is such a small detail that no one would notice unless you were going frame by frame and if this is just supposed to be a metaphor inside of patrick's head how come spongebob clearly sees the spring come out okay okay so let's entertain the idea for a moment that 
Patrick might I'll be some sort of it. Robot. I'll entertain Tony it. I'll entertain it. I'll tickle the balls. And why does this cause him to randomly become smart every once in a while? Well, I looked at all the scenes where Patrick suddenly does something smart, and I noticed a bit of a pattern. There are two different types of these moments. There are times when we think he's saying something intelligent. Wait, SpongeBob! We're not cavemen! We have technology! But then it's revealed he's not actually being smart. Okay. <laughs> This doesn't contradict his character at all. Patrick is someone who doesn't see himself as dumb, so there's lots of times when he tries to be smart, but he fails. Dumb people are always blissfully unaware of how dumb they really are. Yep. <sighs> But there are also moments where he actually does do something undeniably smart. Wait a minute, Squidward. They might be onto something. We could filter the CO2 through our ballast tanks, refire the engines, and ride the shockwave out of here. I remember this. I remember wow. this. He's right. But then he immediately acts oblivious to the fact that he was being smart. We're going through with your plan, Patrick. Yay! What plan? So, <laughs> I kept track of these two different types of moments. And it seems like after season three is when he suddenly switches from pretending to be smart to actually having these smart moments. And this switch okay. perfectly lines up with the season four episode, Patrick's Smarty Pants. In this episode, Patrick falls off a cliff and gets his head knocked off. SpongeBob accidentally replaces his head with some brain coral, which makes him become a genius. Okay. I find all this laughter to be highly illogical. In the end, they switch back to his normal head, and Patrick goes back to his usual stupid self. But take a closer look there at the a plug scene in when he it. puts on the brain coral. Here's your head. Yeah. <laughs> the electricity. Yep. Yep. Now. Many people have interpreted these gears with cobwebs as a metaphor for Patrick's brain never being used until now. But yep. these gears are not from Patrick's brain. His brain came off during the fall, which means these gears are entirely from the brain coral. And at the end of the episode, when they remove the brain coral, we can still see the, the electrical plug, plug yep. attached yeah, we to saw it. it. We, we saw are it. no longer seeing a metaphorical representation inside of someone's head. We are seeing this plug from an outside perspective. The brain coral is just like the Whirly Brains, a robotic device that plugs into your brain to control you. Isn't it convenient that Patrick just happened to land next to a pile of coral that looked identical to his head? Is it possible that Plankton saw this as an opportunity to add another victim to his robot invasion? So how the fuck did he plan this? What do you mean? They, he just knew where Patrick was gonna fall and he's like, okay, let's put this cor coral here. But after Patrick removed it, he went back to normal, right? He completely stopped what? Plankton's plan, right? Well, one season later, in the episode Sing a Song of Patrick, Patrick attempts to use his brain again, and we see the exact same gears inside of his head. Come on, you stupid brain! I don't understand! Because Plankton would have to be the there! The creators went out of their way to recreate the exact placement of all the gears from the brain coral, which means the head Patrick put on at the end of Patrick's Smarty Pants was not his head. It was another piece of robotic brain coral. But it seems like, for whatever reason, this brain coral isn't as effective as the first one, and he's only able to have rare moments of genius. In the season 12 episode, SpongeBob's Big Brother Blowout, Patrick Plankton know? has another one of his smart moments. Oh, would you look at the hour? It's almost time for me to take SpongeBob on a tour so you guys can decorate his house. <laughs> this moment in particular is very interesting because Plankton is actually there to witness it. And take a guess how Plankton responds to him. <laughs> Yeah, I guess even a broken moron can be right once a day. He calls Patrick a broken moron because he knows Patrick is insult. a broken one of his experiments. And if you still don't believe me, in the newest episode of season 13, The Goofy Scoopers, we get this scene. What? This stinks. I wanted to go backstage for an autograph. Plankton was... Yes, he certainly was. And that is the robot invasion theory. I, Thank you very I'm much. I'm not sold. I'm not sold because the whole connecting his brain thing doesn't make sense. The fact that the brain cold, coral just happened to be other brains and, and robot, that doesn't make sense to me. Robot invasion theory done. Hey, we just passed 500,000 subscribers. Like brain coral, coral, yes, but how did Plankton know he would be there? It don't make sense to me, man. Thank you guys so much. This is honestly a dream come true for me. I mean, I've always wanted to have this many people watching me for, um, he was Spongebob cooking theories. for a little bit, but I'm not sold. Like, I'm not oh, sold. I'm not sold. Immediately unsubscribe and leave me if I stop making these, right? Uh, thanks again for watching. I've been your host, the, the SpongeBob guy. I will see you. I'll, I'll, I'll see you guys. Bye.
It was a consistent theory, but I'm not I'm not sold on the Patrick part. Where's Victoria? Do not give me the silent treatment right now. I swear to God, if you did something, I'll... Fuck. You need a gun, man. Alex, you need a strap. Oh my God! Victoria! Oh my... Oh my God. Oh, no, they got me. Where were you? I was using your bathroom. Why the fuck are you pointing a knife at me? Shit, uh... Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, you, you cannot be here right now. No, I am not leaving until you tell me what's going on. Listen, listen, I promise I will explain everything to you later. You just, you cannot be in here. Why are you so afraid of me being in your house? Victoria, I promise you, this is not the time. We have to leave right now. Your muse isn't gonna eat me! Her what? What? You mean the big tentacle monster in my basement? Yeah. How do you know about that? I have one too. What? 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 Fire concept! I like that! I like that shit, man! I like that shit, Alex! <laughs>